Hey everybody, welcome to Rude Awakening TV. Uh, we're just going to bring you into the kitchen and we're going to show you what I'm cooking today. I started cooking earlier today. I started cooking about 10 o'clock today. And so we've got things already in the works, but let's talk about what we did last week. And that was everything air fryer. Last week, we talked about the assets of an air fryer in your kitchen. Sure, it doesn't replace your oven. It doesn't replace all of your other appliances, but it is an asset. And we cooked all things with the air fryer. And I don't usually use an air fryer, and I found it to be really, really uh, a nice tool to use. So uh, on December 18th, we will be uh, having a giveaway. We're going to be at Speakeasy TV on December 18th on Dundas Street in Toronto, and we will be making a draw. We'll have our regular stream. Hey, Andrea's here, woohoo! I said I was gonna stop doing that, Andrea. Okay, so sh Andrea, we're glad you're here because the boomers are trying to boom, and we wanna learn how to do. Hey, Mark is here, wow, it must be raining. Uh, we wanted to try, exclamation mark, shout out to Andrea. And I know you've got this r ridiculously cool thing that says, hey, streamer in the house. Love that. We're trying it. <laughs> nothing. Nothing. I don't know what we have to do. Maybe we have to do... No, it did work. It did work. Wow, we did something. Okay, boomers boomed. We're going to be doing... Our <laughs> We're going to be doing our normal stream. We've got a guest coming in to show us how to decorate. Uh, little Miss Erin, who's on our stream a lot, will be coming to show us how to decorate. So we're going to have a good time there. And uh, maybe Mark will show up and show us all of his cooking prowess. I'm, I'm not sure. We're going to have a fun time. December 18th, a little bit of a birthday celebration for you know one of your favorite streamers. Yeah, so the boomers boomed a little there and we figured something out. Today we're going to be making, it always gives me that look whenever he says I'm getting hyper, I don't care. So today we're going to be making turkey pot pies because we, have, uh, we roasted a turkey. Sometimes we just forget we're Canadian and we roasted a turkey on American Thanksgiving and we used those leftovers to make uh, a filling for turkey pot pie. Oh, wow. That's hot. And we also made a turkey soup. So we are going to be making some turkey pot pies. We're going to show you how to make the filling. And we're going to be making some Christmas cookies. They're not as good as Mark's cookies, but they might be, they might be passable. So today we're going to make our, our drink o'clock. It's called sugar cookie cocktail. And once again, we tried it and there is nothing sugar cookie about it. But anyway, it's a cute name. So we started off already. We're, we're changing it. We are going to, <laughs> we are going to rim the glasses. Mark, we're ribbing the glasses. We are not docking. We're going to rim right now. So we're putting a little bit of amaretto onto the, onto a plate so we can rim them with the amaretto. Now, we're going to use that amaretto in the drink. So we are going to rim them with a little bit of uh, these uh, Christmas things. I love rimming. I know you do, Mark. I'm so proud of you. All right, let's, uh, we're just going to put a little bit of amaretto and we're going to put them into, look at that. Isn't that pretty? That's it. It's a nice little crunch too when you're having the drink. And then we'll do the second one. Nice, pretty. Uh, you know, I saw some things online saying put icing, like buttercream icing. Who, not, who wants that with alcohol? That, no. Now here's where we change it up a bit. We're going to be using some coffee ice cubes. These are just coffee that I made this morning. I'm gonna break it right into the amaretto. Now that, I did that because I just made them this morning. They didn't freeze entirely. That's okay. So, do we have sugar cookie? No. But, you know, we can say that we do. And I'm going to put whatever is left, because there's amaretto and there's a little coffee there. All right, we get to the real alcohol in it. There's going to be um, one shot. I know, Andrea, still on dry November. That's rough. Sorry, that's rough. So we're going to put uh, a shot of vanilla vodka in each one. 
You can hear my uh, voice is a little better. <laughs> Four more days, you can do it. Uh, my voice is a little better. I had uh, a little bit of bronchitis last week, and now I'm just left with the residual uh, congestion, but it, you know, I feel great. And then this is uh, Bailey's. I, I chose a salted caramel one, whatever Bailey's you have. We're going to put uh, a shot, yeah. <laughs> Yesterday we had one of these and we didn't get much done. It was, it's wild. And then uh, I put a little amaretto in there. Who, do you think we should put more? Yes. Yes, okay, we're gonna put a little bit more. We're gonna put just a half a shot because let's face it, there's now a lot of alcohol in here and there's coffee, yeah. So this is called a sugar cookie cocktail and it's not very. Now the recipe called for cream. Let's be real. I'm not using cream in the cocktail. I am going to use just ordinary whole milk. And uh, amaretto due to, nah, oh. Oh, amaretto. You know, It is made with almonds, isn't it? You know, just Google that. Google that, see if you can. Okay, I'm gonna to just top this up with whole milk. Uh, could I use cream? Sure, and if you're in a, a pub or a bar, you probably would expect cream, and I know what I would expect after drinking a cream drink, and I don't wanna expect that. She's not happy, she can't have it. Yeah, I wish I could drink that right now. But you know what, it's the coffee ice cubes. And look, it makes it a nice, I don't know if you can see this in the overhead. Yeah, you can see it, it's a really nice little coffee drink. And I think that the coffee ice cubes have nothing to do with sugar cookie. So here's, the, here's where we do it. Yeah. <laughs> it's delicious. <laughs> but is it sugar cookie? No, you know what it is? It's like a white Russian. Uh, can we all agree? It's just a white Russian that seasonally we've called a sugar cookie cocktail. Yeah, I think we can all agree on that. All right, I'm going to set that aside. Uh, you know what, though? This week with my throat, last week I discovered that uh, when I had a drink, what did we make? We made a Christmas pudding cocktail, which tasted nothing like Christmas pudding. And I drank it, and it didn't actually ate my throat, it actually hurt it. So I don't think that that's, that's the thing to do. All right, so um, I wanna put something in the oven before we start making the filling. Uh, I'm gonna shut that off. Can we, uh, for a moment, go over to this camera, can we just look at my new Staub pan? If you're a cook or you're somebody who likes good quality, things. Yes, indeed, you like this. And, you know, this is uh, cast iron that can be used on induction because it's a coated cast iron. Uh, I know, I know, but I, I mean, I do not have this as a sponsorship. I love my Staub cookware. I do too. Uh, something that I like, it's a little hot, but what I really like, Mark, and you might agree, is that you've got the handle on the other side. You can lift it like this, and it can go into the oven, just like any cast iron. The, the part I like about it is I can use it in induction because it's coated. I do not have a sponsorship, but I do have some big news. Uh, I was given a limited sponsorship by Allclad, and they have sent me some things I'm going to be using in my next stream, and I'm really excited about that. So it came, my, uh, my product came a few days ago, and I want to develop it. And of course, when you have a sponsorship, uh, you need to use it correctly, and you need to promote it correctly. So I can't just off the cuff do that, because you know they know what date it's going to be presented. I have to be careful with that. Let's show you what I made before you got here. So we're going to be making turkey pot pies today. And today I started one because this is uh, the one that I'm baking. We're going to be making mini ones today, four inch ones. But today I made one for my family because I want to cook it and I want to cook it early. And I made a large one. So this is what I made and I wanted to wait to put it in the oven. But I'm not just going to show you a turkey pot pie made. I'm going to show you uh, the 
process of making the filling. So this one you can see, I put a little bit of decorative edge on it and now I'm going to brush it with, you can use the overhead please, I'm going to brush it with a little bit of egg wash. That's yolks and yeah, well, yolks and whites. Now something about this, I'm going to be showing you today how to make uh, how to make these pot pies and to freeze them so that you can have them ready made and ready to go on a moment's notice when you come home it's cold and you just want a dinner they're in your freezer and they're ready made but do not put the egg wash on before you put it into the freezer if you put an egg wash on a frozen pie, when you take it out, it's going to separate, it's going to crack, it's going to be unappetizing, and it's not going to do what you want. So if you've got a little pot pie, it's in your freezer, take it out, brush it with egg white, and then put it right into the oven frozen, just like you would in a processed one that you bought from the grocery store. <clears throat> so I don't want to shortchange this because the egg wash, as you know, gives you a nice finish. Hey Aaron, just, is that Aaron? Yeah. I, I'm sorry, it's far away, I can't see it. Hi Aaron, uh, we just talked about your guest appearance on my December 18th stream. We're looking forward to showing you showing us uh, some really quick tips on how to decorate in a, in a studio that's not even equipped like a kitchen. I, I can't wait to see that. All right, I think I've put enough on. Of course, I could put more, but I don't want to move my stars around. Those are just little, little stars that I, I'm going to show you how to do those if you want to do that. Now, Mark, are you here? Because I need to dock this, and you need to dock it because you need to vent. You need to let some steam vent. So uh, I hate to destroy the look of this, but I'm going to do it in a pattern that still looks nice, not just random. So I've got four vents in there, and this can go into the oven. Now when you cook a pot pie that size with a filling, you want to let it set. You would like it to set and to solidify a bit. If you take it right out, and I cooked it for today's supper, it's such a big pie, I'm just going to have spillage all over the place. But a medium, little tiny pie, that's okay if it does that. Let's get to our filling. I'm going to turn my new stop pan on. I know that uh, the owner of Speakeasy Tattoo, Speakeasy Twitch, she's away, so I know that I'm not going to see Lizzie on today. So let's get going on our, on our filling. You're going to start off with... Um, Let's see, I do have the recipe. We're gonna start off with a little bit of butter. Let's say uh, two tablespoons of butter. Now this filling, this is not how I used to make my filling. This filling is how Monique makes her filling. So I really learned this from my daughter how to make this. I want to tell you something too. Can we stop buying OXO, and this is not going to be popular. Can we stop buying OXO wooden spoons? This is, I bought two recently. This is the second use and they split. I have a spoon. Let me show it to you. Nope. I'm not sure where that spoon is. Uh, I don't know where. I must have used it someplace. Oh yeah, it's in there. Uh, one use and it's split. So, you know, as much as I'll support good products, I'm going to tell you that uh, avoid using OXO wooden spoons. Uh, you, this is an Emile Henry, and it's a bamboo. It will, it, it's where you want to go. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to heat the butter, and we're going to add in uh, about a tablespoon of olive oil. I like the mix together. You probably are the same. And then we're going to add in a diced onion. <laughs> Yay, I'm getting credit for my pot pie. Yes, this is uh, how Monique makes her pot pies. So it's a different style of, I got the wrong knife. It's a different style. She um, makes a roux, and that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be making the roux and cooking the vegetables in it. We're going to be making the roux and using cream and broth. So let's get our onion in there to get translucent. 
Now, can I use this filling today? No, because you make the filling the day before and uh, then you let it cool. So, you know, it's a, it's a nice thing. I roasted the turkey yesterday. I cut the turkey up and then I uh, made the filling right away with the hot turkey and all of the, I made it in a large batch. You'll see, I'm gonna show you. And then I let it cool overnight and it's ready to make a pot pie today. So you can get into one mess, clean your kitchen up, and then the next day you make your pastry and you've got a cooled filling to make. It works that way. So Mark, I hope, I'm glad to see you back. I know that you were away on business. Nice to see you back with us. I'm going to put in uh, two chopped potatoes. Now these potatoes are going to make up the filling, so you don't want them too fine. You want them in a nice, mince but we're making four inch pot pies so again we don't want them too big like it's going into a nine inch <clears throat> the regular size what the heck there's like a, a magnetic stick to my potato here nice to be home it always is it's great to go away it always feels good to come home your own bed that's the biggie your own bed and cook, you know, cooking my own food is always important to me. <clears throat> I find that when I go away, I end up eating food that, you know, just restaurant food to me is over salt and over fat. And yeah, it's just not home. Glad to see you here. Uh, today it's raining out in Cortha Lakes. And if you remember, I'm a pluviophile, so <laughs> I do enjoy rain. I love a rainy day. What's that word? Pluviophile? We've talked about this on, on the chat. Look at this stop pan work. Go, pan, go. And I saw some reviews, people saying, oh, I'm not sure if I like the stop because it sticks. You know, there's, you've got you've to use enough olive oil. Yeah, so I don't know if there's any other Pluvia files on with me right now, but it's a person who finds peace and joy, not exactly joy, but peace of mind in a rainy day. And I've tried to think of why that is with me, why I like rainy days, uh, or why I like snowy days. I think it's because I feel like there's no other option. What I'm making in this stop pan is enough filling to make uh, about a nine inch. So this would make maybe four to six, depending on how much filling you put in, small mini pies, or it would make one large pie. And so that's why, if you put the, the uh, uh, recipe up, that's why you're gonna see th this recipe. All right, let's do our carrots. So um, as Monique knows, this, this recipe is really, you know, the traditional what you want in a meat pie. You can also use those frozen mixed vegetables if you want. Uh, I have noticed right now in the grocery store, I mean, we've all noticed prices of food going up, but I've noticed anything uh, that is processed is a lot more right now. And those frozen vegetables in the dead of winter, there's nothing wrong with those. They're actually better for you than things that have been stored and sitting on a truck for days. But you're, you know, you're going to pay. Uh, last, I think it was one, one of those regular size bag. I don't know, is that like 16 ounces? Uh, I think I saw $4, uh, four and a half dollars for it. And you know, that's a lot for what we're used to paying. In, in, a in a frozen vegetable. All right, let's put in our diced carrots. Uh, listen, this afternoon, if, you, if it's raining where you're at and you would like something to do, I know that Andrea streams this afternoon. The price of butter shocked me. The same, you know, I see people buying butter like, like, do we need it? Do, should we get it? And then, you know, Aaron and I are, are in the throes of Christmas baking 
and all of a sudden you need butter. What I have found right now, and I'm not promoting any business, I have found that the only place that I can afford to buy butter right now is at Costco. And the cheapest I'm going to find it, yeah, if you can get it on sale, but even the stores are starting to not be able to offer things. Hey, Dana's Kitchen's here. Welcome. Listen, uh, if another streamer, Dana's Kitchen. Good home cooking, lots of fun, a, a long stream so that if you really just want to chill out, relax, watch somebody cook some good food, Dana's Kitchen is on Twitch. Go give them a follow. Go give them a look. And by the way, thanks for all the follows I've been getting lately. I appreciate it. We're trying to, uh, you know, our analytics are what gets us excess uh, outside gigs from our streaming. So I appreciate when uh, you give me those follows. Yeah, so I'm not sounding entirely like myself today. And that's because I'm still getting over this bronchitis attack that got me. Doesn't Mo put potatoes in her pie? Uh, Monique, you don't put potatoes in your pie? I don't know. Are you putting potatoes in the pie? Yes. Yes, I do. I put uh, diced potatoes. So let's dice up our celery. Try and keep it fine. You know, nobody wants a, a big hunk of celery. So I'm putting in one rib. Remember, this is a, a nine inch filling or maybe about four little four inch ones. Oh, the backsplash. Thank you. It's, a, it's called a honeycomb. I did choose that. I don't have much backsplash in my kitchen because I don't have a lot of upper cabinets. But I have some. Okay, so I'm going to also dice up some parsley. Yummy. Yeah, the potatoes are just uh, a little bit more hardiness. And they give that, that structure to the to the filling, and if you buy a processed pie, you know, you're gonna see potatoes in your filling. All right, that gives us nice color and a little bit of flavor. Not much nutritional value, but it's not all about that. So let's, we're gonna saute that. I turned it down a bit. bit. This uh, cooktop I have, it's one or the other. It's wild or it's low. Let me clean up my board. Uh, I don't know about you, but I am sort of a clean cook. I like to keep tidy. I have my vegetables. I am going to put in about six tablespoons of flour. Now, most people would say, wait, wait, wait. Don't you uh, take out all your vegetables? No, I coat my vegetables. Uh, if for those of you who just got here, we made a sugar cookie cocktail. Hey, my coffee ice cube is completely gone. So it's a sugar cookie cocktail, Dana, if you want to make this. I, you are good at it, Dana. You are good at keeping tidy. You know, it's just, even when I cook off stream, you like to make a cocktail. This is called a sugar cookie cocktail slash white Russian, really. It has uh, some amaretto, some vanilla vodka. It has some Baileys. And then I topped it up with whole milk, uh, like I wasn't doing the cream. That's not good. It's good. Sugar cookie, no. And I also used a coffee ice cube in it. Gave us a little bit of that mocha taste. Okay, I'm gonna put in about six tablespoons of flour into my uh, vegetables now. That's going to start thickening for us. Now, yesterday, uh, I cleaned, I deep cleaned my dishwasher. And I wanna tell you, if you're a cook, you want to think about doing that. I took out all the vents. I took out the, uh, uh, what do you call those things that go round and round? Uh, the jets. I took out everything out of that dishwasher and I soaked it all. I got all the little bits of food out of it that I could find. But what I noticed is that there was a, a film on a lot of those pieces. And you know, that made me think that it's not cleaning exactly like I want it to clean. I did read that some people do a load every now and again with Dawn dish soap to clean that. 
I think I might do it, but be careful. You could get a lot of suds. All right, you can see that I've got uh, the vegetables really getting thickened. Keep careful of your bottom. You don't, <laughs> keep careful of your bottom. All right, uh, now we're going to put in, uh, let's see, what is this? A little over two cups. It should be only two cups of broth. That might be too much. I'm going to take it away. Turkey broth. Uh, turkey broth that I made from the carcass. Or you can use chicken broth. You know, there's not a huge difference. You know, if you want to have the store-bought broth, those are great. Uh, use one that is reputable and not just salt and water. All right, and now this has to thicken. Let me show you what I made yesterday. So here's, ah, the overhead. You're going to say, what the heck? Look how much I made, folks. This is not just a kitchen today. This is an assembly line. I do this once a year. I do this once a year where I make a large amount of turkey pot pies, chicken pot pies, beef pot pies, and I put them in the freezer, and then we use those for those days when, if sometimes, have you noticed the streamers, when, uh, the ones who are st kitchen streamers, have you noticed that you, you'll stream a whole bunch of food and then you think, wait, like there's nothing for dinner? I don't know. Uh, that happens. It's a great idea. So I have got, you know, cups and cups of this filling. I made it yesterday. Today it has cooled and we're going to be making some pot pies with it. So I'm going to set that aside. And I am watching this because it has to thicken and I can see it is starting to. We're not using this today so uh, I can start it cooking and I can leave it to simmer. All right, so what I'm adding now is garlic powder, garlic salt, and the recipe, if you put it up again, you'll see. I am putting up, um, let's see, um, garlic salt, teaspoon garlic salt, quarter teaspoon of pepper, and I didn't have garlic salt, I had garlic powder, so I just put in some salt. So let's put that in right now. I also put in some thyme. I don't think you can cook turkey without thyme. You could add anything. If you'd like, add a little bit of paprika. You could add a little bit of chili flakes if you like that. I keep these pretty mild because these are served to an entire family and not everybody wants heat, especially my grandson. And these are, a gr he loves these. Okay, it's starting to thicken really nice now. So I can then add in peas. These are some peas that uh, I, I uh, vacuum sealed from the summertime. I'm going to add in the peas. Before I add that in, it's starting to bubble. Can you see it? Okay, it's starting to bubble. Now I'm going to add in half a cup of cream. This is not whipping cream. I don't use whipping cream. This is just table cream, which is a, an 18%. You could use 10% if that fits your vibe a little bit better. All right, let's mix all of that cream in. Remember, this isn't usable today. This is usable tomorrow. But what can you do? You can put even the filling in the freezer into a, an airtight container, and you could make a pie another day if you just want to make the pastry. And then I'm going to add in a two cups of just root, loosely chopped, let's see, Mr. Mark. I've used evaporated milk in the past as a substitute. That's a great idea. Uh, I've, I've even heard that people will use like an evaporated milk when they're making a caramel sauce. I, I think that I draw the line, but this you could use evaporated milk easily, and that's something that can be in your fridge or in your cupboard, your pantry anytime. All right, this is loosely cut turkey. A couple cups, uh, you know, I packed it in here. So as I was carving the little bits off the bone yesterday, uh, this is the little tiny bits that's left around the bone. It's the best way to use for my American friends who just had a turkey in their house. This is a great way to use your leftovers. You always have a turkey in your house. I know. I, I cook turkeys now and again because they really uh, make a lot of dishes. It's a healthy food to eat and it goes far. It's economical. 
Okay, I've got some really nice filling here. And now I'm going to add in the peas. I'm going to add those in last. So who knows how many that is. That's just enough. <clears throat> We're going to stir this up, make this all incorporated, and then I'm going to turn it down and let it simmer. So uh, streamers that are on the stream right now, I've got Dana from Dana's Kitchen. And uh, Andrea was uh, lurking, maybe. Andrea streams at 3 o'clock this afternoon. Uh, she's, she streams in just chatting, and also she plays game, uh, video games. It's, I don't know, I'm not a video game player, but I love her streams because the chat is intelligent and fun. All right, I am going to turn that down low, and I'm going to let that simmer. That's done, and that's tomorrow, or put in the freezer. <laughs> yep, making my grocery list. Good for you. All right, we're going to go on to now making, was that a loud noise? We're going to go on to now making some pot pies. And yes, there's one in the oven. And I have made my pastry dough ahead of time because you know what I do? I make, at one day, I'll say today's pastry making day, I make it in large quantity and I put it into pie-sized discs in the freezer, and I take out a pie-sized disc. You'll have to let it thaw at room temperature. Be careful of it, too. But here's what, you know, I've got this much pastry, and I start making pot pies with it. So before the stream started, I started uh, one, and I'm gonna show you what we'll do. So I'm gonna bring over the filling that I made yesterday so that it could cool. So pot pies are a two-day thing, but that's okay. You get to clean your kitchen up. Notice I, I let some of the pastry hang over. This might be excessive, but... Now, Monique would blind bake her pastry because she doesn't like the pastry getting soggy. Because I'm freezing this right away, I don't have to do that. Blind bake, again? Blind bake is where you pre-bake your pastry halfway. Oh, got a little bit of wetness here. Okay, we're going to make the top. So what I do is I carve a piece off of my big chunk. And we're going to make a top for that pot pie. I'm even going to show you now. I asked Tom to make some labels for me, but you know, when he procrastinates something, it never gets done. So we don't have the labels today, but I'm not putting these in the freezer without labels because they all look the same. All right, so I might make it a little bit of a thin pastry, put it on top of the one that I just made, and I have a fork. Now, you could do crimping. I don't feel like it's necessary on little pot pies, and if you notice, even when you buy them in the grocery store, they are uh, crimped like this with a fork. I think it's because of the size. Now, let's see who is listening. Do I do the egg wash? I wouldn't either if it was freezing, right. So do I do an egg wash? This is uh, for enter into the kitchen, uh, not KitchenAid, that was last year. Mark won that. This is for the Ninja Air Fryer. Get your name in there again. There's a lot of eligible people in there. Okay, look at that. Folks, you've got yourself. I gotta watch my filling over here. This is lovely, lovely filling. Oh, Mark, 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 Mark. Yes, do it. Oh, Mark, you weren't listening and you know it. No, don't, if you're freezing a pie, don't. Don't put, don't put the egg wash in it. <laughs> Mark's bugging me, that's what he's doing. I'm gonna set that aside and we start making another one. Now, I'm probably not gonna go through the whole stream making these pot pies, but. <laughs> don't do it, oh. Okay, don't do it. No, you don't do it. Maybe Dana wasn't here yet. If you put egg wash on a pie and then you freeze it, when you take it out, it's going to crack, it's going to separate, and it's going to go into uh, like a freeze-dried look. It's going to be disgusting. Don't do it. You want your face to freeze like that, either. <laughs> I don't, I'm not going to do it, girl. Okay, you know, use a lot of flour. You don't want this to stick. 
I need more space. My kitchen's not big enough. Okay, let's take a little four inch pie plate and I'm going to show you what to do. I just buy them like this. Yeah, maybe you can buy uh, paper ones like this. What you want to do is drop the filling in to the pie plate. Use your finger like this. Did I say filling? You want to drop your pastry into the pie plate. Use your finger to get into the crevices so that you don't have bubbles. Now I have this tamper. It's not necessary. Like you saw me just using my finger to, in my hand, just to get it nice and tight. <sighs> anyway, you don't need this. You can use something else. You can, I mean, that looks great. I'm going to fill it with the cold filling. You know, I'm really tempted to just drop that hot filling into this cold filling. What do you think? Cooked in the house. What do you think of that? You know, there's, I've got quite a bit here. I think it would kind of work. Now, if I were really pro at this, I would know exactly how much I have to slice off of my larger amount of pie pastry. I just do it by feel. You know, you're just putting a top. It doesn't have to be large. I do try to keep them thinish. I may have made that one a little bit too small. And what do I do? I crimp. Now, something tells me on this rainy day that I might be making these pies for the rest of the day. That's okay. It's a process that I don't mind. What do I do? I take it now and I slice off the excess and I'll reuse that. <clears throat> Two things you've noticed I haven't done. I haven't put an egg wash on the top and I haven't docked it. Uh, Thistle and Oak is right now streaming on their stream. Uh, I think they're making, it's Bob's Burgers today, so they might be making a burger. They said they're gonna come over in a bit. Uh, like I said, if you're new here and you haven't followed, please go over and follow me. I'm really trying to get those numbers up, like we all are. I'm gonna make a next, another one. Oh. Let's make, uh, you know what, let's take, a, let's take a vote. Should I put the hot filling into the cold filling and hope that it cools it down? Hey, Dinner with Mom is here, welcome. Dinner with Mom is another streamer and another home cook. Thanks for, uh, good morning, thanks for coming in. First time view. First time chat. Nice. Okay, I am making turkey pot pies today. We made a filling and we've got cold filling that I made yesterday. This is a way to use up some leftover turkey. And according to my American uh, stream chat folks, uh, we have a leftover turkey. I roasted a turkey yesterday simply to do this because it is good winter food for my family. All right, so I'm going to make the bottom for this one. We'll go through that process one more time. Dana. I would let the hot filling cool first. Yeah, Dana, I think, you know, it's one of those things that I know I'm going to cut a corner. And you know what it's like to cut corners? Yay! Well, the way from New York City, we have got Elizabeth. Hey, Liz. Tell us, tell us what all the cool people are doing. Tell us what it's like in New York City, if that's where you're at right now. I kind of think you are, but uh, we might be doxing you. <laughs> Playing Mario. Well, hey, Lizard, thanks for showing up. Uh, Liz, Lizzie is uh, the owner and streamer from Speakeasy TV, and that's where we'll be s December 18th. So, you know, go over to Speakeasy TV, give them a follow, and actually watch some of their content, not just, <laughs> not just give them a follow, watch their content. It is one of the only queer TV channels that has complete content for the gay community, and it is fun, and it is funny. So, Friday night, Speakeasy TV, 
funny. Uh, Allison Chains didn't uh, make it today, probably is doing something, is an artist and streamer from Toronto, and I love her. All right, so last one I'm going to make with you today. Liz, we're making um, turkey pot pies today. I need a drink because my throat's still doing its thing. So deep into Mario, you almost forgot. Boy, that sounds like when you were a kid. Clean your room. Oh, I'm so deep into Mario, I almost forgot. Almost. So we have made a turkey pot pie filling. It's chilling. <laughs> and uh, Dana from Dana's Kitchen has advised me <laughs> she has advised me uh, not to put the hot filling into the cool and I know it's one of those short cuts that I want to make and I'm not going to do it. All right, so excess fill. You see how I can just make these and look, I've already got three over there and I know everything that's gone into this and that matters to me. I like to know what we're eating, what my kids are eating, what my grandchildren <laughs> are eating. And I don't want to eat processed food and I don't want to eat thickened gravy that has no substance or no vegetables in it. So I'm trimming again. Trimming, trimming, trimming. Can you give Teddy a shout out? Hey, Teddy! Are you there with Liz? Nice to see you. Nice to, I'm glad you're on today. Tell me what you're doing. Sounds like you might be playing Mario Kart. Mario. Oh, am I old when I say Mario Kart? Or is there any such a thing? I am not a gamer. I'm not a, I, I don't play video games. The only thing I know about things are the sounds I hear in the background while I'm cooking and everybody else is playing. Uh, Teddy is beating us at games. Mario Party. Mario Party, okay. Oh, sorry, I was like so totally not cool there. All right, you can see I've got a ton of filling here. And look at uh, how much pastry I have. So you could see how much. Here's, here's a bottom. And, hey, bottoms. And here, you know, that much is going, even smaller, is going to make a top. I've got lots of pies here. After the stream, I can continue that, but I've got some more exciting things to do now. So let's set this aside. Actually, I want to show you how I package these so I can do one. <laughs> Here's a bottom. Oh boy, where's Bomb when I need her? All right, so I take a little bag such as this. You can get these at uh, any wholesale place that sells packaging. I just buy them by the, the big case of it and then I have them like that. I put it into the bag and then I also buy, because you know that's what people do, a big box of tie, twist ties. So this will be Tom's job after. And then I twist it. Now, the labels that he will be making as soon as this is over will say turkey because I also make beef and I make chicken and, and you know everybody's got their preference. I cut the lid off like that so it's neat and tidy. And there you have it. This is what goes into the freezer, a perfectly good homemade turkey pot pie. It took a, hey, Thistle and Oak is raiding. Welcome Thistle and Oak. Thank you, Paul and Lindsay. Come on in. You know what, Paul and Lindsay are here. Should I make another turkey pot pie? Raid, raid, raid. Welcome. My name is Connie Powers, and this is Rude Awakening TV. And you have raided with Thistle and Oak. Welcome to my stream. Today is turkey pot pies. Today is Christmas cookies. And we're going to make one more because uh, Lindsay and Paul are here and I streamed with them or I, I went on to the stream earlier today and they were saying hey what do you do so here's our show of the overhead here's the filling we made now this filling is hot so we can't use this today hey one boy's here dinner with mom is here yay it's this one oak subscribe thanks for that subscription thank you thank you thank you you know this is a new community a new friend group hey friends that I've met and you know it's turned it around it's made it a lot more fun to stream. We only stream once a week so far because we've got so many other things in the go. 
on the go. Uh, tomorrow we do a farm tour. So we do this farm journalism thing. And then we go to uh, Red Mill Maple Syrup Farm. You'll see that on the scroll above my head. So tomorrow we go to the Maple Farm. We will do an interview, a tour. We'll see their product. We'll see their process. And then we bring it back to my kitchen and we cook with their product. And that's just a really fun thing we do. That's tomorrow. All right. We... Um, we made a Christmas cookie cocktail today, and Lindsay, you were curious about it. It's nothing more than a black. I missed drink a clock. Was it delicious? I'm just talking about it. It is. White. You said black. Oh, it's a white Russian, right? Well, what's a black Russian? No milk? No milk. Okay, so this is a white Russian, really, but let's call it a sugar cookie cocktail. Tastes nothing like a sugar cookie. It has amaretto, Bailey's, vanilla vodka, and I threw in... I threw in a uh, coffee ice cube the sprinkles. and the sprinkles and it tastes like a white Russian and then I topped it up with milk I didn't use. Yeah, it is yum. Mm -hmm. I didn't use the cream. The cream grossed me out. You know, the coffee ice cube in it, nice. All right, so we're going to make one more. So uh, Paul and Lindsay. Thanks for showing up and bringing your folks with you. I hope your stream went well. So I've made my pastry ahead of time. That's what I do. So it's a, it is very good. Uh, it is very good. It's just not sugar cookie. And I've noticed that, you know, uh, not being a real drinker <laughs> is that I go on, I think, okay, here's my theme. I'm going to look for one. And I think, oh, this is going to be delicious. Then I taste it. It's like, no, no, there's nothing. There's nothing even. Uh, oh, I am, okay, that's Paul. Thanks for logging on that way too. Every log on helps. And you know, as a streamer, what are we looking for? We're looking for numbers increasing. We're looking for analytics. And when you are um, pitching yourself for another job, you know, the analytics always come up. And so we're always looking for that. I am making a bottom. Uh, my daughter is on here. You'll see her as Queer Chaos Inc. Inc. Uh, she is the owner of Speakeasy TV over at Speakeasy Tattoo Shop. If you want to give them a follow and you want to see some really fun, creative streamers, ah, ah, go see Speakeasy TV and you'll, you'll, get a, you'll get a good stream. It's not cooking. It's, what is it, Liz? Like, what is it? Is it chat? Sometimes there's games. It's a, a variety show, I guess. What you don't want to do is you don't want to have the pastry crack, and I, I was trying to go too fast. So I am dropping, let me get this out of the way, sorry. I'm dropping the dough, the pastry dough, into the aluminum pie pan. Variety show. Yeah, variety show I think is the best description. So Speakeasy TV, please go over there, an affiliate channel with me, and they're re really the reason why I do this. If you could go over and give them a follow, give them a watch, I bet you're going to be a regular follower. They've got uh, some amazing, funny people that are artists in, this, in the community. <laughs> they're funny to boot. All right, I'm going to fill it with the filling I made yesterday. This is chilled. It has potatoes, carrots, uh, peas. It's funnier than, you know why? It's speakeasy is funnier than Saturday Night Live. And I defy you to watch it and not find yourself laughing along with them because uh, Allison is probably, Allison and Celebrity Juice Diet, Chris, is, uh, Liz is funny too. Allison's probably the most witty human being I have ever come across. So Allison Chains is a performer and artist and streamer in the city of Toronto and you need to go check her out and check out this speakeasy TV. All right, so now I'm going to make a top on this pie and you can see what I've done here. Now I'm going to use a fork to crimp it. Uh, yeah, if, I do have some merch and I'm sure Liz just put that up there to uh, nudge me into mentioning it. I have some merch. If you want to wear a t-shirt or a hat that says rude, uh, you get it. And everybody else will think, oh, okay, whatever. But it's fun merch. 
and go over there and see if there's anything that you need for, for Christmas. I've kept my prices down because I would rather you wear my merch than make a profit. I don't really care about that. that I know that's not very businesslike of me, but that's the truth. Okay, let's see. People should go check out the merch at the link. Yes, please. Uh, listen, here's a pie. Paul, Lindsay, it's an easy pie. I'm going to be making these in a production line today because you can see I made this filling yesterday. It's cool. This filling is hot. It's going to chill, and I'll make some more tomorrow. I put these in the freezer. I have multiples of them, and then that's a really good meal for us in the winter when I don't feel like cooking. I always feel like cooking, though. I think you might agree. I'm going to set that aside and we're going to go into our next dish. And that is my son-in-law's favorite cookie. And it's called a jammy dodger. Now, jammy dodgers are made with a sugar cookie base. So that's where we got that. That's why we called it... Uh, what, what, that's why we called it sugar cookie today. Let me wash my hands. And I'd like to just wipe my, what's going on? I'd like to wipe my surface. Tom has a little uh, video to show while I'm cleaning up. Please watch this. <clears throat> Okay, we found that yesterday, obviously not how to make jammy dodgers and not seriously how to eat them either. But we just thought that looked a lot like John too, so we thought that that was funny. All right, we're going to make uh, these jammy dodger cookies. You can make, this is, this is basic sugar cookie, and we have a recipe. Tom's going to put that up for you. So you can see there's nothing uh, elaborate about this. It's butter, sugar eggs, vanilla, and flour. Nothing elaborate. There's no leavening in it. You don't need that. So um, I made this yesterday and I put it in the fridge overnight because I like it to firm up a bit. And you don't have to though. You can use them right away. Going to eat fair. Well, thanks for the raid. Go lurk, watch me, and enjoy the food you made. So where's my, uh, there it is. Can I just uh, bring your attention to this rolling pin? This was given to me by Allison Chains, who I was talking about earlier. I love it. Her dad made it. It is really a nice feel. We're going to make these cookies today that have a base. So a jammy dodger is a base and a top. Handmade, I know. This, the, I, it, it's got such a nice feel and such a nice control of it that it, it's, it's a game changer. Here's the cookie we're making today. So it has a base and it has a top. I've made a hole in the top so that when I spread some raspberry jam on it, I put them together and the raspberry jam, yes, your UK friend, these are a British staple. Now we're going to do them as a jammy dodger today and then we're going to change them into an Austrian Linzer. And you'll see how I make that two different cookies with one technique and one batter or one dough. So today we're going to put a few in the oven and then I'm going to assemble the ones that have pre-cooled. I put a little flour, not as much as I would if I were using the, the other pastry. You don't want your cookie dough to be uh, flour tasting. I, I would like, you, these are two cookies together. So you don't want this big thick commitment of a cookie. You want to make these thin. You could say a quarter inch, you could even say a little bit thinner, like a snap. And then when you put the top and the bottom together, you've got less of a 
big thick cookie and, and the jam can balance out the whole cookie. So I'm going to roll it out. Uh, it's still a little thick. When you um, sprinkle your flour, then rub it so that it's even and you're not going to get a pocket. And then I rub the top a little bit. All right, I'm going to make these as uh, thin. <laughs> There's a little bit of parsley in that. All right, that's adding a little bit of greenery. All right, I'm going to make, here is a cookie cutter I've had since the dawning of time. So it is about a two inch wide. You can use anything you have as long as, as long as they are thin and they're like a snap because you know you don't want them thick. So use the top of a glass if you've got a glass and you want to do that. Just be careful you don't cut. So here's my base. For every base I have to make a top that has a hole in it that has a window effect. I don't have that perfect size cutter for the top so I use my nutmeg grater and I just make a circle with it and then I've got that so you can see here's what I've got what I usually do is I do a whole pan of base and then I do a whole pan of tops as long as I have even so we're going to cut out some bases so my grandmother was uh, from was British she was Canadian born but her family was British and she had British parents. <clears throat> so uh, she had a lot of British cookies and uh, recipes from her background, even though she wasn't from the UK herself. All right, uh, one more. Can I get one more? Yes, before I have to. Uh, you know, you, how many times do you want to roll the same pastry? Not often. So I have three, six, nine, twelve. I need to make twelve tops. Uh, cookie pan. Now you'll notice that I don't grease my pan, I put parchment on it. I do that so that my cookies don't brown at the bottom. These I left in a little bit too long and I got a bit of browning. That's going to go on the inside of the cookie and it, it's not going to matter but you know you just want a really nice gently cooked cookie. So I'm going to take a bit more. Uh, this recipe that I put up there, that's one cup of butter I think to three cups yeah, to three cups of flour, is it three cups? Yeah, that one will make oh, a good couple dozen and maybe that's all you need. And that recipe is so simple and basic that you can duplicate it, you can half it, whatever suits for you and what the people you're cooking for. I have the little circles, I put that back in, I will use those. <clears throat> now you're thinking, well, this is a jammy dodger because it's going to have jelly in it. Smile Times, hey, welcome. Smile, that's not Jane. Hi, Smile Times, welcome. Thanks for coming in. Uh, we, we did make some turkey pot pies, and uh, we are now making some cookies, some Christmas cookies. I'm showing you a process of how to make, it's like a sandwich cookie, it's called a Jammy Dodger. So, uh, what do you think? Is it thin enough? I don't think it's thin enough. The last thing I like is that real thick cookie. So there we go, I like that. So I have 12 over there. Here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, I have enough that I can even make some more. Like I said, when the stream is done, I'll continue. Uh, mm, is that like an imperial cookie? Yes, imperial cookies is another name for it. But imperial cookie doesn't have a window. And I sometimes make those too. So you'd have a bottom, you'd have a top, and you would put uh, with an imperial cookie, then you'd put the raspberry jam in the middle, but then you would put a white glaze on top. And that's what an imperial cookie, those are a real favorite, aren't they? So again, do I could just get a pipe. I've tried that using just a pipe to make that hole and then it's hard to get the little thing out. So I find, that one's not centered. I find using this, uh, not, so just look around your kitchen. I've also have some little cutters that are like holly leaves, Christmas trees. You can use those little fondant cutters to do it. 
Now, when I use the fondant cutters, I find that when they bake, uh, sometimes they misshapen, and you can't tell what they are by the time you're, you're done. So these are classic. These are classics. Yeah, so I'm glad you brought up the, that it's like an imperial cookie because very similar, but no window effect. No little hole on the top. I am going to get these in the oven and then I'm going to show you some assembly that I made yet, uh, this morning, actually, and they had time to cool. The best thing is make these, again, day ahead. So for the people who are thinking I'm not spending all that time in the, uh, in the kitchen, you just do these one day, let them cool, the next day is assembly. I think I could make 5,000 of these and they would all get eaten. And this is the last one before um, I start assembling. I've got all the little dots, so I'm going to put those back in. And I'm going to put these two trays in a 350 oven. There's a great bakery up the street from me that sells fantastic imperial cookies. I think I'm going to have to go get one after watching this. Uh, there's a bakery here in Kawartha Lakes that does the same thing. I think they're a real favorite, especially around Christmas. I'm going to put these in the oven 350 for eight minutes. So we're going to put some together. I take the bases and I take a couple of the tops. This is some raspberry jam that I made when raspberries were in season. Fear not, you can buy raspberry jam. You can also put in uh, Nutella. You could put in marzipan, that's good. You could even roll out uh, fondant if that suits you. It just changes the traditional authentic way. So I'm going to put a little bit of raspberry jam between. I, I try to stay in the middle so that it doesn't just seep out towards the, the sides. That's not pretty. And then look what I've got. So I've got the little window showing the cookies coming through. Little raspberry jam. Now, that's beautiful and that's tasty. I could do them all. You don't need to watch that. This is some already done. Now, if the, what's the difference? This is a straight up, mmm, marzipan sounds so good. I like those the best. And you know what marzipan's really good on? Uh, with, you can put a little sl slim piece of marzipan and then you can put the raspberry jam on top. You know what? Smile times, you've just, You've just uh, motivated me. Uh, this marzipan, this size marzipan was 10 bucks. So, <laughs> way to go smile times, I know. Smile times just said, hey, let's do that. And Connie's got marzipan in the cupboard that I was looking at the other day thinking, oh, I wonder if I should have bought that. Uh, you know what, this might be red alert alarm time. We're going to have to put a little because marzipan is almonds and sugar. And now uh, this is something I think Andrea could not eat because it is an almond paste. Let's try a little like this and we will have the producer actually eat one. Tough job. I'm going to make it thin because you know who wants, well I do, I love marzipan. We're going to cut it with the, cu the cookie cutter that I used for, I just might die. Well, yeah, nobody wants to see that. Okay, a little bit of marzipan, and then a little bit of raspberry jam. I don't think it'd be good with just the marzipan. It'd be a little, oh, 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 oh. Okay, marzipan, raspberry jam, and a top. Hey, look at it, look at it in the, in the overhead. Look how pretty that looks. Look at that. So you see the layer and you still see the jam on the top. There are worse ways to go. Okay. Smells really nice. Get over here. Okay, producer's gonna eat it and let us know. I like this idea. I think I'm gonna be continue to create like this. How is that? Can you taste the Mars pan? No talking. No talking. Okay, no talking, which means 
It's delicious. Now, I noticed the marzipan slip a bit. Let's change that up. Let's put a little bit of raspberry jam, then the marzipan. Yeah, I think this is going to give us a, a nice adhesiveness and it's going to give us a little bit more flavor. Why just limit it? And then like that, pretty look. It's a pretty look and it looks nice from the top. This is brilliant. I think you may have created something new. Not the best thing to eat at a computer keyboard. Yeah, he's eating at a computer keyboard. Now let's take, take this from uh, a jammy dodger to an Austrian Linzer. And the only thing that is different about that is that they are sprinkled with icing sugar. So I am going to put these on here and I'm going to turn those into a Linzer cookie. Whoa, I almost dropped that. Wow, that'd be a real stream moment. So uh, I have a very fine, it's, it's really a tea mesh that you can steep tea. That's what I use for this because I don't like clumps. I like it to look like snow. And then we're going to just do this. It even looks like it covers a little bit of the strawberry middles. Uh, th there we have it. So you have an Austrian Linzer. I like this. I, you know, I, I still call them jammy dodgers. Cookies, I know, look at this cookie. So in it, Paul, we have just made a difference. We have put um, a little bit of marzipan paste that I rolled out to the same size, and we put that with the raspberry jam, put the lid on it, and boom, we sprinkled some icing sugar, and you've got a delicious cookie. All right, we are going to end the stream today with that. Uh, you can see. Oh. Uh, Tom has a video he wants to show you. We'll come back after you watch this video. Uh, so I'm in the process of doing it. So I think that Smile Times uh, should be entered loads of times, <laughs> loads of times into the giveaway that's happening December 18th because I think she just created, they just created something that's very fun for me. Look at the marzipan, the raspberry jam, the top on it. You know, some like this, some the other way, and some, everybody's got a little, and it's a nice bite. That's just a really nice bite, and I'm happy with that. So next week, when we come back, uh, we will have Red Mill Maple Syrup Farm Tour ready to show you. We'll be making all things. Uh, yeah, well, you can take credit for that, Smile Times, because it was your motivation. I had it in my cupboard, but it was you saying, hey, what about... And I like the combo. Next week, we're going, uh, tomorrow, we're going to Red Mill Maple Syrup. And next uh, stream, we'll be doing all things maple syrup. And we'll be showing you that tour. It's a really big maple farm. Oh, just a minute. You know what that sound is. Yay, these cookies look beautiful. <clears throat> Not overcooked. Just a little bit of undercook, which is perfect for me. My pie in the bottom oven is looking great. Uh, we looked into getting an oven uh, camera. If anybody would like to donate $3,000 to our stream, that's how much an oven camera costs. We're going, to, we're going to do something about that, though. We'll be coming back next Sunday with Red Mill Maple Syrup, which is fun. Hey, listen, I really appreciate all of the follows you've given me, and I appreciate all of the views. And that, that brings us to the end of our stream. I'm going to continue to cook. Please follow Thistle and Oak, uh, Dinner with Mom, and Dana's Kitchen. Bye. Please follow Speakeasy TV. Treats by Mom is here. Hi, Jane. We're just ending. I know that Jane is uh, in Puerto Vallarta. And, and, you know, nobody wants to know about it, Jane. 
I'm late, you are, but listen, you listen, nobody wants to know about the beautiful sun on the beautiful beach. It's raining at Kawartha Lakes. We hope you're having a good time. Have a great Sunday, everybody. We will see you next Sunday with all kinds of things. We're going to be bringing in some all clad uh, tools next week to show you. Until then, keep cooking, keep nourishing yourself and the people you love. But until then, this kitchen is closed.